Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. Today I've got my long arm with me and we are going to do a video on how to do ruler work. Now you can do this on your domestic sewing machine. The process is different, but the concepts are the same. Uh, the difference is, is you'll be moving your quilt and the ruler at the same time. Whereas with this one, you're going to be holding the ruler steady and just moving your machine. So it's a little bit different, but a lot of the concepts are gonna be the same in terms of how to work around your quilt. So I strongly encourage you to give this a go. I personally love ruler work because it allows me to do quilting that is really stunning. And I think it makes me look better than I actually am because I can quilt some really stunning great designs without a ton of fuss. So the first thing you need if you're gonna do ruler work on a long arm is an extended base. This one will just slide on my long arm and what it does is it gives me a larger workspace. So that way when I'm putting a ruler on, it lays nice and flat over the entire surface as opposed to flipping and flopping because my actual distance of my machine is just right here and it would be flopping all over the place if I didn't have this. So this is a must have. Um, you can contact your long arm manufacturer to get one that fits your specific machine. If you're doing it on your home sewing machine, you wanna have the largest extension table you can get, again, so that you have room to work with the ruler. There's a couple of things that I do in order to prep my quilts when I am thinking I'm gonna do ruler work on them. The first is I press my seams open, every single one of them when I'm piecing the quilt top. Now, if you've got a top that you haven't done this with, it's not that you can't do ruler work with it. I just find it's a lot easier to get into those corners when the seams aren't bulky and you can get a really nice flat seam when you are pressing the seams open. So I always do that. I also, even though I love my Aurifil thread for piecing, I like to use glide in my machine when I'm doing ruler work. It gives a little bit of shine to it and it also in the 40 weight is really thin thread so that way I can go over the line several times without it looking bulky. So I really like that and I'm able to get the tension really well on my long arm but experiment with your machine because your machine might prefer different threads than mine. I'm working on an APQS Lenny and using glide the 40 weight in the top and bobbin with that one that has a little bit of sheen to it works really great for me. There are so many long Long arm quilting machine rulers out there. They're sometimes called templates as well. My favorite hands down is four in one by Natalia Bonner. We've got it on shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. I really like it because you can do so many things with it. It has an arc if you're going to do curves. It has straight lines with grid marks on it that uh, list how many inches away you want something to be. And I'll show you how to use those today. And it also has two curves on the side. So I find that I reach for this one more than any of the other ones that I have, and I have a lot, let me tell you. But this is my favorite because I feel like it's really versatile. It's not that it's the only one you'll ever need for your entire life, but if you're gonna get one to give it a try, this is the one to go with. If you are trying this on your home sewing machine, I would recommend that you get Slim and Archie by uh, Angela Walters, their creative grid ones. We had those as well over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. Uh, they are a little bit smaller, so they're easier to work with on your home sewing machine. A long arm, you have a lot more space to work with. All right, well, let's get started. One more thing you need is a ruler foot. And a ruler foot is going to be a circle. And the outer edge of the circle is always gonna be exactly one quarter inch away from your needle. So that way, when you have your ruler foot next to it, it is always gonna be exactly a quarter inch away. That's gonna be really key because you're going to use that in order to work along your pieces. So that's kind of one thing that kind of takes some getting used to is when you are going around, you have to think, you have to think of how you're gonna place your ruler a quarter inch away from where you're going to work as opposed to right on the line, like when you're cutting or doing anything else in quilting. I'm gonna start by pulling my bobbin thread up to the top. Then I'm going to place my ruler so that it is right next to the ruler foot and it is even with this line about a quarter inch away from it. So I've got my seam and then the ruler is about a quarter inch away from that. Now you're going to put your hand down on the ruler and I always tend to work in a sweet spot. Like you've got this whole ruler here, but I want to work kind of in the middle of it because you have more control in that middle than you do on the end. So there's kind of a sweet spot. You kind of have to do it to figure out what works for you. 
And then you kind of just give it a little bit of pressure on both ends. So I'm giving pressure both with my hand pushing against it with the sewing machine and then also with my hand here. And it gets, you kind of have to get used to working along all sides as you do this. I find that it's easiest for me to work when it is underneath, but there are times when I have to work with it over top. And so you kind of just have to get used to having the ruler in all different positions and being able to hold that nice and steady. So I'm starting just by outlining the edge of this. I usually always outline first. And I am just a hair on the inside here. All right, so now what I wanna do is I want to come in so that I am the same distance away from this point on all of the points. So in order to do that, I'm going to make a little mark on my lines. And this ruler is great because it has all of these lines on there with measurements, but I want to make it easier to see. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some painter's tape and I'm going to put it across the line that I wanna to use to hit this. So for me, that's going to be the three quarter inch mark. And you'll notice when you have these, the rulers start at half an inch. And that's because if you have it exactly in line, you're stitching a quarter inch away. So that's kind of an interesting thing to get used to doing. All right, so what I've done here is I've lined up that blue painter's tape with the seam center. And I'm going to stitch until I'm about even with that dot there, that center. And then here's where you have to get used to sewing a quarter inch away. So now I'm lining this up so that it, the edge of the ruler is about a quarter inch away from the point. And so then when I sew in, I'm gonna sew right to that point. Then I'm going to repeat that process, just working my way around the block. So this time I'm lining the painter's tape up again with that center, just as I work around. Coming about to center again, and now I'm gonna line it up. Again, so I'm about a quarter inch away from my point down here. All right, so same deal. Painter's tape back in line with the center. And, and then the edge of the ruler in line with the point again, but a quarter inch away. And you just kind of keep flipping this around, lining it up each time as you go. And then we're gonna go back to where we started. So you can see my ruler was a quarter inch away, but I was able to get right into that point. All right, now I'm gonna stitch some straight lines going across here. And this is where you wanna kinda of stop sewing as little as possible because having to cut threads is, is your enemy against time when you are sewing. So I'm just going to, in this case, hold it nice and steady and stitch all the way down. Then I'm gonna stitch back over that line and I'm able to cover it perfectly because I'm using this template and I haven't moved it so I know that it's still nice and straight. Now normally I would stitch, hold the ruler on the left side here because that's more comfortable for me, but so that you guys can see it a little better, I'm gonna hold it on the right. It's a little bit more awkward because I'm reaching across my body, but it will work. And like I said, there's times when you have to hold it in an awkward way and you just kind of need to get used to being able to do that. All right, so I've now quilted that entire center and I've done it without breaking threads one time. So to recap, first we stitched in the ditch going all the way around, then lining that ruler up with the painter's tape even with that center point, I stitched in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out again. And then I stitched all the way down. And so I didn't have to break thread. I stitched back to the center, stitched up and back down. 
So I was able to create a really cool center star that'll be a nice focal point of that block without too much muss or fuss, and it's gonna look really cool. I'm gonna go ahead and quilt a couple more bits so that you can kind of see this in action, and you can kind of see how I will go work around outlining different things, but that's really the main part. I'm not gonna get into the curve today. That would be another video. So if you like this, um, definitely give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you wanna know where you can get some of that thread uh, because if enough of you like it, we might stock it here at Quilt Addicts Anonymous. Um, but check it out. And this is my first time doing a video on the long arm. It has a really strong light on the bottom. So, who knows how this is gonna turn out as far as the lighting here. So if you like it, give it a thumbs up and I'll figure out how to best show this and maybe turn this light off so you guys can see it a little better on camera. Um, but I'm just gonna quilt around a little bit more so you can kind of see how this works. The best way to do it though is just to get in there and do it. Give it a try, see how it works for you. And you can do a lot with just your um, straight lines and this is really a great tool to have. All right, so here's where it really comes in handy to have all of those inch lines on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it started. And first, I'm just gonna quilt straight down the edge. Now what I've done is I'm lining the two inch marking on the ruler with my seam here. So I've got a three inch sashing here and I want to quilt in one inch straight lines, but I don't want to mark it. So as long as I keep this two inch mark, even with that seam, I'm going to sew a perfectly straight line one inch away from the edge. Again, normally I would line it up with the one inch on this side because I find that more comfortable for me. But so you guys can see better, I'm lining up with the two inch over here. So now as long as I keep this in line, and I've gotten to the point where I can't control it any further. So I just need to slide it down a little bit. And I always stop with my needle down when I'm doing that. I'm also using the stitch regulator. So now I wanna do one more one inch line here. So I'm gonna line up with one inch, even with that seam. Drop my needle so I can pull the bobbin thread out to start a new line. So that's it. Now I have quilted straight lines exactly one inch from the edge without marking anything, and it's because I used the lines on the ruler. All right, I'm gonna quilt a little bit more around here and let you guys kind of watch how I do it. I essentially am doing the same thing I did in that first one where I'm just outlining stitches and then I'm going about halfway in between the triangle. So as we keep moving a little bit further down, I am doing more and more backtracking as I get over. So I've already stitched this entire triangle, including this edge, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna backtrack along it in order to get to my next triangle without having to break thread. So now that I'm down to this corner, I can just change the direction of my ruler and go over easy to go right over that stitching line because I've got the ruler right there to make sure I stay in the same spot. And I can just keep on quilting and without breaking thread and I can do this entire block with one piece of thread. And that is fabulous because then you have less stops and starts and you can get done faster. I love ruler work. It makes me look so good. Um, even though we're really just doing simple things, we're just doing little straight lines but knowing how and where to manipulate those lines makes it look really cool. I'm gonna put some images of the final quilt in there. I'm doing the exact same stitches in the color areas, but I'm using matching thread for that. So when you look at it, you're gonna see texture rather than like really dense, brightly, 
color quilting. Um, but it's just the same thing, just it's going to be in bigger and bigger quantities. And some of the triangles are maybe a little bit bigger than others and some are a little bit smaller. So give it a try. You probably don't wanna do it on a quilt that you need done on a deadline. It probably is better to just draw some uh, squares out and give it a try and a practice piece before you go crazy on it or just whip up some half square triangles like this and do something real fun and just practice making those triangles the way I did. So you're gonna see the big reveal of this quilt soon. It uh, is going to be our next block of the month. So you've got a little bit of a sneak peek today and we'll have a big reveal later. So until next time, happy quilting.